This is Bassam Haddad. I'm your host. And today's emergency teach-in, we will be discussing Israel's ethnic cleansing, pros and cons. With our two experts, Sinan Antoun and Adil Skandal, and myself, Bassam Haddad. A quick intro to our speakers. Sinan Antoun is a poet, novelist, scholar, and translator. He is associate professor at New York University. Adil Skandal is an associate professor of global communication at Simon Fraser University, where he is director of the Center for Contemporary Muslim Studies and the Chair of Graduate Studies in the School of Communication. I'm Bassam Haddad, founder, founding director of the Middle East and Islamic Studies Program and Associate Professor at the Shar School at George Mason University. Today's topic is pretty controversial and there'll be a debate among us, as there should be, given the topic of ethnic cleansing. The world has been giving Israel a hard time about ethnic cleansing, not least during the ongoing sessions at the ICJ, the International Criminal Court of Justice. International Court of Justice. In anticipation of Israel's response to the charge of genocide at the ICJ tomorrow, today's emergency teaching foreshadows its arguments by addressing Israel's ethnic cleansing in terms of pros and cons. Surely, ethnic cleansing is not nice. But imagine, imagine for just a moment, what would happen to Israel if it did not engage in constant ethnic cleansing? Yeah. How would it build settlement? What would be the rationale for daily evictions and home demolitions, or even the casual terrorizing of Palestinians? What would be the reason to burn whole fields of Palestinian agricultural land? How would it seize water and other resources from Palestinians? And most importantly, why on earth would Israel commit genocide in Gaza and starve 2 million Palestinians without the express purpose of ethnic cleansing? It just wouldn't make sense. It would be a waste and a misuse of American arms and support. After all, it's been almost exactly 20 years since the United States has engaged in large-scale barbaric crimes against humanity such as the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Yani, it's time. However, there are some downsides to Israel's ethnic cleansing too. Join our illustrious team of experts to discuss this important topic. Adil Skander, our media landscape expert, Sinan Antoun, our cultural landscape expert, and myself, I'm the social science expert. Adil, we will start with you our media landscape expert. Would you please tell us what your take is on ethnic cleansing? You're muted, Adil. scholars okay we analyze we meticulous we just we just got you adil so you have to repeat because i was, say this was are... this, i was saying this was a blatant attempt to silence the those who disagree with uh, with ethnic cleansing uh, as media scholars we analyze representations of ethnic cleansing and ethnic cleansers with incredible precision and caution i want to make a case that there are significant disadvantages and inconveniences some serious cons to being uh, an ethnic cleanser first of all it makes you look absolutely horrible in front of your hippie friends this is a very serious problem in addition to that you also have to constantly claim that you're not racist which at the very least is extremely exhausting and at worst excruciating you also have to take time off of your very, very busy schedule to deal with pesky and nagging South African lawyers at The Hague. Really, it's just a very, very difficult process to deal with. You have to act like you care about things that you genuinely don't care about, such as listening to uh, your kids sing Baby Shark for the 200th time. It's so similar to that, constantly being nagged about being an ethnic cleanser. You also need to find alternative driving routes around very, very inconveniencing protests that are upset about your ethnic cleansing. It is such a chore 
and and really you get places very late and and it makes you look bad and then in addition to that you also have absolutely random human beings random folks keep coming out of nowhere and claiming that things that you've taken from them are actually their own that specifically is extremely uncool and so for that reason um, there are very very difficult and excruciating um, disadvantages to being an ethnic cleanser now i know basem you're going to disagree vehemently with this opinion but uh, but i but i hold my ground on this that it is it's very, very difficult to be an ethnic cleanser. Thank you. Well, uh, as a political science expert, uh, I don't, or social science expert, I should say, I don't support Adam's critique of ethnic cleansing. I mean, for starters, what would our pundits, on, on our pundits here in America on TV do if Israel is not actually doing that? How would security studies programs at universities prep rising graduate students for the highest government jobs that require justification for systematic racism, barbarism, and genocide? Producing a Blinken takes a lot of work, folks. More humanitarian arguments can be made for Israel's ethnic cleansing. However, first off, where would Israelis live without ethnic cleansing? Huh? Did you ever think of this? Or even genocide? How would settlers on ethnically cleansed land in the West Bank be able to see the sea if Gaza is inhabited by Palestinians? And for the woke crowd, ethnic cleansing is good for the environment. Less people, less carbon footprint, and more golf courses. Most importantly, before we go to our last expert, without ethnic cleansing, what would be the rationale of the collaboration between anti-Semitic politicians and Zionists across America? What would they talk about? Can you imagine that conversation? It'd be pretty boring. I'll move to the next and last expert, Sinan Antoun, who is our cultural landscape expert. Sinan, can you shed light on this dilemma, please? Thank you, Bassam. Uh, I believe that as scholars, it is incumbent upon us to unpack, deconstruct, and demystify. Ethnic cleansing is grossly misunderstood, and one should pause and appreciate the Herculean efforts, the humanity, and the audacity it takes to carry out ethnic cleansing in these woke times. I don't think one can fully appreciate the enormity of the act unless one commits it. You have to be Israeli to understand it. Why are people picking on Israel and treating it with such blatant bias and disdain? Hold your horses, that's what I say. When it comes to ethnic cleansing, Israel has always been the most consistent among settler colonial states. After all, it began with ethnic cleansing in 1948, and has never stopped or wavered ever since. It is actually improving and developing and continuing to do its best. How on earth can a settler colonial nation fulfill its potential without an ethnic cleansing every now and then? Moreover, we all know that Israel looks up to the United States and tries to emulate it. President Infanticide, sorry, I mean, Genocide Joe spoke after October 7th of the shared values of the U.S. and Israel. What, for Spinoza's sake, might some of these shared values be? Surely ethnic cleansing is right up there with is at the top. With, it, with Israel, there are also always added features and updates, but always carried out efficiently and for a better world. If you ask me, Israel should be declared ethnic cleanser of this century and the previous one. It's quite an achievement. Thank you. Thanks to our experts for their invaluable opinion. Even though we disagree, the debate will go on. It'll probably unfold at the ICJ this week. I'd like to close by asking everyone here if you have any additional comments. Not this time for me. 
actually, no, I, I have something to say. I'm sorry. Um, come to think of it, I have no idea why we're discussing this. Golda Meir said that there were no Palestinians. So how can you ethnically cleanse people who don't exist? Honestly, I'm completely disappointed with this emergency teaching. It is absolutely bogus. I don't know why we're here. There is no act of, of ethnic cleansing in this case because there are no Palestinians. Thank you. Thank you, Adil. We will have to agree to disagree. This was our fifth episode of emergency teachings on ethnic cleansing or Israel's ethnic cleansing pros and cons. We'll see you next week with another emergency teaching because we can anticipate emergencies about a week ahead of time, which will be titled, Why is the U.S. not doing enough to support Israel? Assalamu alaikum and bonsoir. Well, you know what? Well, maybe you should take these people. Maybe the solution is that these people aren't in this sort of prison camp that Gaza's been called, even though, of course, actually, you see pictures before, um, you know, not at all a prison camp. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that maybe, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, that, that these people should be offered a new life elsewhere. Now, many may not want it, but we have seen, and I was really surprised when I discovered this. This is my own ignorance, and apologies for that, but this, the awful phrase, ethnic cleansing, I don't like that phrase. There's a difference between, you know, uh, people being you know, uh, you know, killed to be to be removed from a, a, a piece of land than, than, than the forced expulsion. This has happened numerous times and in recent years since the since the Second World War, there were huge numbers of people in their millions who were moved from you know, from, from lands moved to basically there was non-stop uh, you know fighting between ethnic minorities right you know you're you know you're going to Greece, you're going to Turkey, you're going to Albania, you're going wherever. This has actually been incredibly common. And, of course, we've seen the ethnic cleansing of Jews and Christians in the Middle East without anyone batting an eye lit about that. Um, do you think that may be the answer? <laughs>